Hi, I'm 8-Pack and I'm here to introduce to you my new Dark Pro Memory module Modules by Team Group. When I was asked to produce a range of memory modules, I thought to myself, what's the most important thing with memory for me? And obviously, there's three things really. The aesthetics of the memory, the compatibility and the performance at XMP, and also the overclocking headroom. So people who are into tweaking can that, get that extra bit of performance out of the memory for the same cost. Okay, first let's look at the aesthetics of the memory and the design I chose. Here we have the modules uh, mounted in uh, the ASRock ITX motherboard here, uh, the XC70 board. Uh, and as you can see, they're a, a very neutral monochrome uh, design and literally would fit in with any system. I mean, here with the ASRock board, you've got a bit of red on the board. So a system with this, I'd probably highlight the red in the cables and maybe use red RGB. But the memory is certainly not non-intrusive. Also, we've got the memory modules here mounted in uh, the Z270 Hero Asus board. And again, they're fitting in nicely with this totally black uh, and white colour scheme with uh, obviously the black uh, and white of the I.O. cooler there, black cabling and so on and so on. Similarly, we've got here the mounted in the in the Aorus uh, Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, this motherboard obviously has silver on the heatsink as well as a touch on the hero there. And again, the silver logo there looks really nice with the board. So basically, when I was thinking about the aesthetics for this memory module, we, we wanted something that's totally unobtrusive and can fit into absolutely every system. If people want to highlight colour, they can do that with RGB and other, and other components. But the memory just, just fits in and just works. Okay, so that's about the aesthetics of the board and, and how I was motivated. Like I say, I don't want I don't want something on the memory that's really gonna you know highlight the entire system. I just want the memory to fit in there and then use other components to to, to give the, the touch of colour if you wish to. Okay. Moving on now to compatibility. When I uh, was first asked to design the, these memory modules, there was uh, initial at launch problems with Ryzen overclocking memory modules very high. So this was my priority to produce a range of memory modules that are working great with Ryzen because I knew on the already established Intel platform these memory modules would, would already uh, be very compatible. So the SPD was tuned uh, on, on, on launch, if you like, for uh, Ryzen compatibility, knowing that Intel would also be very good. But of course, across platforms, all the memory modules are being tested to work well. So XMP, which is 3200 megahertz, 1414 14 timings at 1.35 volts, the memory modules are working absolutely perfectly on the older Ryzen, Ryzen BIOSes prior to the new Agia code and on the newer, obviously working even better on the newer Giza code, uh, all the way up even in excess of 3200 megahertz, but we'll discuss that a little bit more when I go on to overclocking. So on AMD, all the boards, even the cheaper B chipset boards, all the way up to the X370 Tai Chi or Crosshair, we have uh, 3200 megahertz working at CAS14, which is a very high performance uh, level timing. On the Intel platforms, they've been tested in Z170, Z270, X99, and uh, obviously the newer chipset X299, with both in dual channel and quad channel performance. And again, the, 14, uh, the CAS14, which is obviously a very low CAS latency, normally around 3200 MHz memory kits are produced at CAS16, you're getting great performance and also great stability. So, Having uh, tested across everything, I realised that I had compatibility covered uh, with the, the SPDs of these modules. And what's also helping with the compatibility of the modules is there are very highly selected Samsung B die uh, that goes on on the on the uh, PCB. Uh, and the Samsung B die is is also aiding the comp compatibility and obviously the performance. But not only is it aiding compatibility and performance at XMP, it's allowing some really crazy overclocking to go on. So now let's take a look at some results here on the desktop that I've done uh, with overclocking a variety of the modules that I've just pulled randomly from our stocks. Okay. So firstly, let's look at uh, some Ryzen overclocking. Now Ryzen uh, more recently uh, has had a recent Agisa update, which many uh, owners of Ryzen all know. And I covered that in the last video where 3200 can easily be reached with a lot of memory modules. 
Here we have uh, an example of with the, these memory modules with a, a voltage of around 1.35 to 1.45 which is completely safe on the Samsung B die. Uh, a lot of stability testing here with the memory set at 3466 uh, at CAS 16. I mean this uh, kind of performance level you normally expect at 3200 but here we're at 3466 which means also on the CPU we're pushing the CPU cache up to 3466 and gaining the not only benefit from the overclocking of the memory but also the overclocking of the cache. So here we have the testing for that and like I say very easy on the, on the higher end boards especially the Tai Chi or the crosshair just to plug in the timings, plug in your voltage and with the newer Giza code it just boots straight up. Uh, and, and you're pretty much stable. Although I do advise some stability testing to be done before you start using programs that, that uh, are really hammering the memory. So that's 3400. Here we also have the same memory modules running 3600 stable. Uh, this was on the Tai Chi motherboard and I've qualified that this can also run on the Crosshair uh, and several other boards too, especially on uh, the XT70 range. And here uh, we have uh, again uh, some stability testing running the entire memory utilization. Uh, and the uh, memory timing here was CAS 17, 17, 17, 17, 41. Here CPU Z is re reading actually CL18, but it, it wasn't CL18 set in the BIOS, it was CL17. That is a bug of, of CPU Z. So again, you can release high performance of your cache and high performance of the memory modules itself by running at 3600 on AM4 Ryzen, which is really getting great value for money out of the memory sticks. Now let's examine some Intel overclocking. Intel has a slightly stronger memory controller, so it can obviously go a little bit higher. On X299, uh, this was on uh, the Strix board, which is already released. Uh, up to 3866 MHz was, was completely stable, no problem. Uh, and that was at 18 and 2020 timings. Now, I also tested this on, a, on the unreleased Apex motherboard. Uh, which for NDA reasons I cannot show here, but on, on, on the Apex it could go uh, 12133, no problem, at 18, 20, 20, 41. So really crazy overclocking from 3200 all the way up to 12133 on X299 in dual channel. And in X299 in quad channel, and this was again on the Strix motherboard, uh, it could easily do again with a rear uh, stability testing all in quad with 32 gig memory utilization, it could easily go uh, 3733, three, three, no problem, 18, 20, 20, 41. So again, even in quad channel, the memory is, is very strong performance on uh, a, real, a motherboard that's released now. If we're using uh, a future release motherboard, the Apex, again, which I cannot show screenshots because of NDA, there was no problem to get to 4000 in quad channel with the same timings here. Again, always with a voltage of 1.45 or less. Uh, that been completely safe on these modules. Finally, let's look at some Z chipset overclocking. And we can see here uh, that on the Z270, and this testing was done on the Apex motherboard, uh, 4133 MHz at 18, 20, 20, 41 was absolutely no problem. So that's uh, really a crazy overclock from 3200 all the way up to 4133 MHz, uh, completely stable uh, with full memory utilization at a voltage of 1.45 uh, volts or so. What is also important to note is that these memory modules, if, the if you're the extreme benchmarker, uh, can go like 3866 or even 4000 megahertz, 1212, or even in some cases 1211 with high voltage. Now obviously I don't recommend this for 24-7, but they are useful to the, to the benchmark who wants to eke everything out of the memory performance. Uh, and 3866 or 4000 is, is also fine with high voltage, even as low C12 uh, cast latency. Okay, so we've looked at basically what you can expect from a, an, a, an average kit of these memory modules by, uh, you know, in terms of overclocking or gaining performance. We've also looked at what you can expect from these memory modules in plug and play, as in they're very compatible. Now let's quickly go through how you actually overclock these modules up to 3866 here on the uh, Maximus 9 Hero motherboard. I mean, this board's... Uh, a four DIMM board, so you'd expect it, it to peak around 3866 or 4000 megahertz as the capability of the motherboard, or, uh, or be, 
simply because it's a far dim board. So let's uh, just go through how to overclock these modules up to 3866 on this motherboard. So I'll just restart first. Of course, each motherboard uh, vendor has slightly different BIOS settings, but all, all you really need to do is set the primary timings, uh, the memory speed, uh, and the voltage, and on all, all boards, uh, given the right BIOS, the, the stick should come up. Here we are in the BIOS. Uh, obviously, at post, hit delete to get in the BIOS. And here you can see we're at the XMP of the memory, which is 3200, 14, 14, 14, 31, as previously discussed, at 1.35 volts. So we're going to overclock the memory on this board, which is about the limit of the board, to uh, 3866. We're going to do that by changing from XMP to manual, allow us to set the settings ourselves. Quickly down to DRAM frequency. Set 3866 3, here. Once you've done that, into the DRAM timing control. And for these memory modules, you want to be, uh, for this kind of speed, you want 18, 19, or 18, 20 sometimes, 41. Out of that menu, then down again, set our DRAM voltage, uh, and anything up to 1.45, 1.475, even 1.5 on Samsung is absolutely fine when overclocking, uh, just set that. Now, obviously at very high uh, memory speeds, also VCCIO and system agent uh, can be important voltages uh, for the IMC on the CPU. But a lot of boards these days have great auto rules, so you don't need to touch them unless you have real problems in booting, uh, or you, seem, you think that you've hit the limit of the CPU and not the memory modules. So at 1.45, and just leave these on auto, but they may well need tuning. Anywhere up to about 1.3 on each is fine on a decent uh, AIO cooling solution. But here I'm just going to leave on auto. Once I've made my settings, uh, F10 to save. Here are the list of settings, of course, that I've changed. Uh, and then enter. Now the board's just uh, training the memory with the new timings uh, and booting up. Okay, we've booted back into Windows now. Uh, let's use CPU-Z to check the memory speeds taken and all the settings that we put in the BIOS have taken perfectly. So straight into CPU-Z. Okay, uh, click on the memory tab. And there we go. 1933, which obviously you have to double because it's uh, double data rate. So we're at 3866. Just check the SPD that these are the Team Group Dart Pro 8 pack memory modules. And as you can see, yes, they are. These are the, X, uh, the XMP, and this is uh, the overclock value. Obviously, with any memory, memory overclocking, it's not guaranteed. But, uh, but pretty much every single stick that I've tried out of uh, this memory, and I've tried a, a, a lot of sticks now, can, can reach these levels, or even 4K, even 4133, at the settings that I used uh, when showing a few results earlier. So the few results earlier, if you want to just uh, pause, pause you know, this video uh, and plug those values in for your own sticks in your own BIOS, just as I did there for this 3866, it should... Uh, the, the board should boot straight up. Obviously, there is a limit on the CPU and there is a, a limit on every motherboard. So it's not guaranteed, but overclocking on these sticks is really great. Right? Obviously, finally, what you'd want to do if you're uh, going to run this 24-7 is, is a degree of memory memory testing, uh, something like HCI mem test or Windows mem test or and some real-world applications to just check that your overclock is completely stable. So that's about it for these memory modules. I hope you agree, really great performance, uh, a great price point with great aesthetics. Obviously, if you want to uh, check out more about these modules, uh, check out the links below. If you want to buy, go to overclockers.co.uk or Case King and search the 8-pack range of memory modules. Thanks for watching. I'm 8-pack. Goodbye.